Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 91, although we may as well call this the shelter in place episode. I am joined as always, or as recently, uh, by my new co-host, Omar Ansari. Omar, uh, how hey, are you? Hey, Salam. Salam. How are you doing, man? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. This is actually uh, our first time connecting. We are so overdue. This, this is really connect. cool. Yeah, we're, we're kind of connecting in real time in the sense that we haven't caught up because we are both sheltered and sheltered in place and hunkering down in our homes and trying to avoid, um, or we're practicing good sound social distancing, right? Even between us. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, uh, looking forward to catching up with you. I've been, I've been making the calls with family and, yeah. and friends and whatnot, but, uh, definitely looking forward to catching up to see how you're doing. Yeah. So obviously, uh, to our listeners, I, you know, I imagine you are experiencing the same thing we are. Uh, Omar and I are here in the Bay Area. We are recording this episode on March 28th. And for those keeping up, uh, there are, t- as of today, uh, and again, this was a few hours ago, so the numbers could have already changed. But um, th- we are at day whatever after um, patient one uh, showed up in Washington, but we've got 113,000 plus cases of coronavirus in the United States, uh, resulting in, in unfortunately, uh, 1,892 deaths. So imagine everyone's sort of absorbing and kind of, uh, what's the word, processing Processing. everything that's going on. Yeah, exactly. So um, now, now you're in a kind of a unique, or not unique, but you're, you're in an interesting, or, or I should say, uh, kind of different from my scenario. So, um, well, I, I guess I'll, I'll just kind of first mention where I am. Right now, um, I'm, I'm obviously at home. Uh, my wife, who's a school teacher, she's basically been home for now, uh, I guess, what has it been now, two weeks since school shut down? Yeah, we finished two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And obviously, my kids are home, just like your daughter um, is home with you and we'll get to your sort of unique sort of situation in a second. But um, yeah, so uh, my wife's a school teacher. She's uh, doing online uh, remote uh, visual learning with her virtual learning, sorry, with her class. Um, They try to check in once, like once a day or once every other day. And same thing with my, uh, with my high schooler as well as my elementary school girl. So yeah, we're, we are um, obviously in the Bay Area. California, I think, was a little ahead of the curve in terms of uh, trying to put in place shelter, shelter in place and trying to really minimize um, the spread and, and to flatten that curve as, as, as it's kind of become the, uh, the catchphrase. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at home. I've been at home for about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughters I have a 12-year-old, almost 13-year-old, and she seems to be happy in her room with her, with her phone and laptop and TV and homework and friends, virtual friends. But um, my, some, my family's actually in Canada, uh, meaning my wife and my other daughter. They happen to head out there um, just before the border closed. So essentially, we were trying to work from home uh, here. And before you realize the severity of it, she's like, you know what, um, let me go to Canada, see my parents. Since, I, since I'm working from home, there's like time off without having to take yeah. vacation. Um, and we were also doing some construction in our house, which made the house really hard to live in. So she's like, let me go to Canada and, and, and spend time with them. And then literally things escalated and the border closed just the following week. Uh, but we're, you know, we're, we're surviving here. I'm What's below. the status of that? So if she were, is she able to come back if she wanted to? I think so. I think so. Um, uh, so, so she, her work, she works at a startup uh, in San Francisco as a lawyer, corporate lawyer, and her work basically a week before mine gave the order to work from home. Got it. Uh, we've been doing some major, major renovation on the house, like adding several hundred square feet and remodeling and whatnot. So it's like a six month project, which we're like smack in the middle of. Um, so she, she was trying to work from home first week and uh, the schools got canceled. She's like, hmm, you know what? The house isn't very livable right now. And there's literally dust everywhere. And 
uh, and is, is, is construction still ongoing in spite of the no that's caused that's that's the irony about all right because the first they were people were hammering hammering and drilling and plumbers in and electric electricians and all that and she's like you know what let me take this time and go to Canada um, again this is before how we realized how severe it was so she and the younger one my seven-year-old went over there um, and then that's when kind of things escalated in terms of her coming back I think she could but we've pretty much agreed that it's probably a better idea just to stay put mm. uh, for a variety of reasons right now the construction got frozen uh, because the, con the the contract the general contractor doesn't want to send people here risk me getting sick the subcontractors themselves are like not committing right you need all of them to be able to, to get work done so things right. are very much in status quo, but you know what? Like I said, it's it's alhamdulillah. I got I got um, I got a roof over my head. I got right. online groceries coming regularly, and uh, my twelve year old, almost thirteen year old, is being super cooperative. So things are actually okay. Great, great, yeah, yeah. I was um, getting, kind of going to ask, like, I mean, I, you know, working from home or remote, you know, working remotely for us. I, I think living in the Bay Area now. I know your your more recent gigs have been kind of in the office kind of mold um, uh, mode although for me you know working at home is par for the course i've been doing that at my last three positions although um i just started a new job as well this was i just finished week one of my new job and i was supposed to be in chicago where my my new employer is based and uh i obviously i couldn't go to chicago for for the training and for the onboarding um, and in spite of the fact that I was the the expectation was that you know there's a small office in San Francisco, and I was going to be looking at a daily commute again. Um, obviously, that is uh, on pause. So um, you know, but but I, so I've kind of shifted back into my usual mode of being able yeah. to work remotely. Um, yeah. So, but in terms of uh, you know, I guess what. What's the daily routine for you guys? Like, I, I got a routine, but you know, before we go in, I, I just wanted to acknowledge you got a lot going on. You had you switched. Yeah. You mentioned the the new yeah. the new job. I haven't even like I said, this is our first actual conversation. Yeah, um, so I'm really asking in real time. But uh, you got a lot going on with the, with the job switch. Um, but also, I I know there was some um, sad news in the in the extended family. Yeah, uh, so I think. Sorry about that. You. No, I, I appreciate that, and um, yeah, I, I think um, you know, um, uh, Lina Unwer, who some of our listeners may know just by virtue of the fact that um, her plight for the last fifteen months had kind of gone viral. Um, you may have seen hashtag swab for Lina. Um, you had like Hassan Minhaj. Uh, What's her name from the office? Uh, Kipling. Mandy Kaling. Yeah, Mandy Kaling. Sorry, um, and you know Lily Singh. A lot of like sort of you know prominent sort of Indian American, uh, I guess you know Desi American, um, uh, you know artist had sort of taken the cause. Um, so she had she had a very rare form of leukemia, and so she needed a bone marrow transplant. Um, which they did about a year ago, and the she responded very very well. Uh, oh, so so the swab for Alina thing had kind of gone viral. A lot of people registered. A lot of people did the swab, sent in the kit, which uh, kind of served two very positive purposes. One was obviously to try to find a match, a DNA match for um, Lina, but also um, apparently, you know, Indian, uh, the Indian, Desi, South Asian, and by extension, even Middle Eastern, Arab, like essentially the, you know, the demographics of our Muslim American community are grossly uh, underrepresented uh, underrepresented in the uh, in the uh, uh, um, uh, like donor donors among the in donors. the donor base. Thank you in the donor base, right, with stem cells and so on. So um, it was a positive in that regard that a lot of people got swabbed, a lot of people got uh, added to the registry. So that was a net positive. Um, Unfortunately, they were unable to find an exact match, um, uh, although the closest they got was actually her brother. So her brother, who is also a, oh, sorry, who is a physician, um, you know, he was the closest match. And so they did that bone marrow um, and stem cell uh, surgery about a year ago. She responded really well. She was uh, kind of back to work. She had a really good job um, for NPR, working for NPR, um, in New York State, in New York City, and then she had moved back to her home in Southern California, and she was still going to be working with NPR. So that had sort of happened about a year ago, and we were all very happy and grateful. And um, about a few months ago, um, the leukemia came back, unfortunately. 
Um, and, and she, mm -hmm. had, she, you know, even though she had gone into remission and it came back pretty aggressive and, um, uh, about a week ago, you know, things turned even worse and, um, yeah, she passed away on early Friday. Yeah. Early Friday morning. Um, uh, sorry, Thursday morning, early Thursday morning. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, thank you for asking. And, uh, yeah, we, we, um, you know, it's, what's kind of interesting and what I, um, I haven't actually come across any articles and there's so much information out there. People want to, there's so much just talking about life in this quarantine and, and shelter in place kind of, you know, social distancing world that we live in now. Um, one of the things that I found interesting is, you know, like you and I have a cousin's wedding coming up or it was supposed to be what next weekend. And yeah. that's obviously canceled in Sacramento. So I, I was thinking about this um, in terms of how we're responding to um, you know, community, like, I guess as a community, like things that we're used to doing on a communal level. And I think, you know, I was thinking about this primarily within the context of like funerals and within the context of weddings, um, you know, things that are, you, you know, where you want close friends and family and we can't even do that. So um, from what I heard, they had to minimize the funeral services uh, which, as you know, I mean, as our listeners know who are Muslim, you know, they're usually done in a mosque and usually, you know, the community at large shows up, close family friends show up and it's usually done in a mosque. And then um, there's a very short prayer, communal prayer um, with the body of the deceased. And then the body is then taken to the cemetery and then there's a burial. Um, but of course, now with the state's um, you know, shelter in place, they had to minimize the funeral to 10 people attending because California is restricting groups of 10 or more from congregating. And the funeral had to be performed at the cemetery itself. Um, and so, you know, I imagine that's obviously in these last two weeks, I imagine close people or people have had friends or family members or extended family members who have passed away. And this is kind of the new normal that we're living in where even something like a funeral service, which generally speaking is something that, you know, you, you want friends and family to be with you um, just is untenable at this point. And so a lot of the extended family, myself included, uh, we couldn't attend, you know, I couldn't go down to Southern California to attend the funeral service. Um, you know, a lot of her close family members in Chicago and elsewhere uh, who would normally have attended, couldn't attend um, given the sort of new normal. So, um, and so I was thinking about that. I was thinking about yeah. how I imagine, you know, I can't be the only person who, knows of someone who has passed away, let alone people who are dying because of the coronavirus, but even unrelated, right? Um, and then, you know, something happening on my wife's family, for example, you know, her nephew and niece are going to have a baby um, and they're up for, um, you know, um, induced labor or induced surgery, uh, induced, uh, yeah, in induced labor on April 1st. What does that look like in this new kind of new normal, right? And uh, you and I, I, or I alluded to, I think it was April 5th or 6th, we were going to be at a wedding in, Chica in Sacramento uh, mm -hmm. of a mutual cousin of ours. Um, that's canceled, obviously. Yeah. Um, right? And so this is sort of the new normal, man. This is kind of, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that's a lot more than you wanted to talk about, but I, I mean, no, how, no, how I are just, you kind of sitting Yeah, just also, again, I, would just, I just saw, the, saw that, um, and I, I, I hadn't thought about it, and, but I do remember last year, everything was going on with trying to get donors. Oh, yeah. So, so I just, yes, so I just wanted to extend my condolences to you and the family. I think this must be on your dad's side, right? Because this is not somebody I, I know. Correct. Uh, and, and, and in fact, even though we are extend, we are related distantly from my dad and your mom's side, mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to go there. But yeah, this yeah, is yeah. actually my dad's mom's okay. side, which is okay. even different from yeah. the uh, relationship that your mom and my dad um, uh, are related to. But um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. And uh, but like I said, you know, just sort of obviously pro processing it and, and, and trying to, you know, um, just to sit with it on a personal level, but also thinking of it within this sort of context of the new normal in terms of how people are having to even, you know, not be there for deceased, you know, um, mm -hmm. family members and not being able to attend funeral services, et cetera. I imagine that's something that, you know, at least someone in our listeners in, in our, in, in our, in, in, uh, among our listeners are probably dealing with. Right. So that's kind of, again, how do you deal with all of that? Yeah. I heard, I did hear in, um, in the UK, like last week, somebody had passed away. That was the first 
coronavirus uh, death. And same thing, they had to have the uh, body in a body bag, couldn't, couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't do all the normal rites and, um, and very, very limited attendance in the funeral. So a very similar situation. Now you're going to mm-hmm. start seeing that in the Bay Area. I think yesterday we had the, one of the first, um, the first Muslim death. It was, I think it was an Iranian woman, an older woman who died yesterday in the Bay Area. Um, oh, first Muslim, okay. first Muslim that passed in the Bay Area anyway. That we know of. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I, There's an article I didn't about that. it in the Chronicle, the SF Chronicle. I see. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, uh, but yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to also say, and then uh, again, just kind of catching up. On the flip side, um, you've had you've had some some good news. The 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 work situation, you know, the work, um, yeah, yeah. the new job. I should say the new job change. So that's uh, congrats on that. Thank you. And you, started, and you started on a on a at a very interesting time to start a new job. I'm I'm actually dealing with that uh, as an HR uh, person in my company. Right, I'm on where we're onboarding people and we're do, kind of doing what the, what you're. Uh, experiencing is starting a new job as as a as a remote employee during this whole work from home crisis how's how's that going yeah um so we're we're in the tech space where i mean i work for a technology company um our clients are used to working remotely um so uh, we haven't been impacted economically as much although at the end of the day our clients are lawyers and uh you know we do have a lot of law firms that we cater to and generally speaking, law firms, at least, have generally been kind of in the office type, you know, kind of uh, work environments. And so our clients are being kind of dealing with this new normal in their own kind of way, because, like I said, typically law firms are very much in person. You know, you, you're, you're in the office, you, you know, you work in a collaborative team environment at a law firm. Um, and so our, our clients are responding to that in real time as well. But I mean, we haven't felt the direct economic reverber- you know, like reverberations of, you know, in terms of any massive or any layoffs or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, to, to your point about kind of an interesting point, you know, by the time I had even, ex- I had already accepted the offer, I had already, you know, sent in everything and, you know, there was a start date and all of that, but um, I hadn't even approached my start date yet. And already we had begun hearing about this sort of economic um, you know, uh, impact of the coronavirus. And so I was, you know, a little, I was a little uh, nervous, but uh, yeah, of course, everything was, everything was on track. And I started um, on the, on, on Monday, on the 23rd. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't, yeah. in, like nothing unusual, other than, like I said, I would have been normally speaking, I would have been in Chicago right now for probably yeah. the first two weeks. Um, and so We've shifted onboarding to being entirely virtual, um, whereas it would have been normally um, in person. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and that's it's kind of funny because um, I, I didn't I didn't when when we had our first show uh, with me on it I, I didn't really talk about my career. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, long, long story. I mean, I've been in tech for 20, 20 plus years, twenty two years. Um, you know, and after starting, I was an engineer and kind of moving to, to the Yeah, you have a technical program. background. I mean, like your background yeah. is in double E, right? That's right. Yeah. Electrical engineering from uh, Gonzaga. But uh, you only know that reference if you're a college basketball fan when I say Gonzaga. <laughs> but uh, anyway, long story short, I, I, I'm now in, in HR. I'm an HR uh, ops manager for um, uh, a semiconductor software company. But anyway... Um, on on Saturday morning, uh, two weeks ago, my boss called me up and said, "We are moving to a work from home situation." Uh, it was actually optional before then, and for a number of reasons, uh, so, as simple as being, I like the ergonomics of it. Uh, I was going in, and uh, that whole week when I was going in, I was like, "This is nice because the roads are empty," and, and this is what I wanted all along. But Saturday morning, two weeks ago, got a call. And she's like, okay, we're, we're moving 100%. And this is like the VP of HR. She's like, okay, I need you to make sure that everybody starting on Monday and everybody who has an offer between now and the next six weeks, uh, sort that out, right? So we had to put together a process to make sure that they understood what was going on, not to come in. How do they, um, how do, how do they get situated from an access and computer point of view? Uh, how do they get all their documents, you know, their employee eligibility uh, situated? So that's that's been going on, and at the same time, we've had people leaving too, um, both uh, uh, you know voluntary and involuntary. And how do we handle that? Like, how can you do all these things without actually physical contact with the person you're interacting with, whether it's a new start, 
or, or a, an exit. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's actually been a really busy couple of weeks work-wise. Aside from that, it's just getting, making sure your team is, is engaged. Like we've been, we've been moving to, um, to Microsoft Teams really aggressively. Like I know, I know people have been talking about how Zoom is, is, has caught fire with the millennials and whatnot. Um, oh, and we should probably point out, um, the, you know, Zoom, you mentioned Zoom. Uh, and this is by no means a, a plug for Zoom, but uh, <laughs> right. I, I, a lot of people are using Zoom. But we're actually recording this on a Zoom call because of the fact that obviously we can't go into a studio. We can't go into our normal studio to record. Um, and so if you're noticing a little bit of an audio difference, that's because Omar and I are exercising, uh, as I said, uh, <laughs> social <laughs> right. shelter in yeah. place. We're about, what, maybe two, three miles away from each other. Um, yeah. And so normally we probably would have even done this in person if we couldn't get into the studio, but uh, yeah, so no studio, no in-person, and so- here No we, guests, no, no guests, guests, right? And so, so yeah, here we are on a yeah, Zoom call. We wanted to just- Yeah. We, it's funny because we had we have a guest um, kind of uh, in the queue. Yeah. We've been, meaning, we've been meaning to put that episode out, um, and, um, and it's just been on hold because we wanted to just yeah. touch base, number one, but then we thought we'd have this episode just to kind of connect uh, with each other and with our audience. Yeah, before posting another show. Yeah, exactly. And, and we'll talk about that. I, I, I appreciate the tease of the upcoming epi yeah. episode. Um, but yeah, um, uh, as far as, uh, yeah, this is, again, kind of responding to where things are now. Um, so what are you, what are you, on a, I've seen, I've seen on Facebook and, and we're all, you know, social media has been big <laughs> here, but are you like a, a, a one, two, three, or four, or five on, on the scale of, um, uh, you know, quarantining. Like I'm like a straight up 4.9. I've barely left the house. Okay. Anymore. So I was going to ask you, can you set up the, yeah. Yeah. So one is like Florida, you're going to the Florida beaches, right? You're, you're basically partying on Santa Cruz boardwalk. I guess Got we're it. not allowed to, but yeah, uh, that's a one. And a five is basically like my daughter, she's not leaving her room. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Uh, I would say we are probably at three. Um, yeah. Oh, that's really low. Yeah, it is low. Um, and I'll tell you, like, so I, I'm, I'm not breaking any rules. I'm not doing anything that I'm not supposed to. Um, so suffice it to say. No, no. I, and you're a big hiker. And yeah. You like this. No, unfortunately. Bay Area yeah. yeah. So you have, you're, not, you're not going to like uh, the beaches and the trails, right? But I'll be honest. I mean, we probably would have hit a trail. But as you know, Omer, we've had, we've had some kind of um, like the weather has just been gray and cold. Yeah. And kind of just gloomy. We know? have to and be it, careful. If we have any non-Californians yeah, and we're talking about <laughs> like, it fell, I think from six to sixties to the fifties. I know. I and, know. Uh, People should always it, take our griping about the weather. In it has been cold. Yes. It but it cold. has been cold. It has been gray and it has been gloomy. Um, uh, let alone, you know, yeah, certainly by, by Northern California standards, but also I, I would just say, yeah, in general. So, so, so that's, I guess, prevented some of the things that we probably would have been brave enough to do. And so, yeah, so sorry, let, let me go back and talk about that three. So unlike you, I have not shifted, or you alluded to this, but, um, um, you know, we haven't shifted everything to online only. So what we do is, um, you know, we, uh, we order takeout if we're going to eat, obviously, because we can't go and sit in a restaurant. So I am, you know, we, we do order takeout maybe once a week. Um, uh, we, um, uh, do go into grocery stores. So um, now when I go into the grocery store and, and it's primarily been me, I don't want to take the kids. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, look, I'll be the, I'll be the guy. So my wife doesn't go, my kids don't go, I go. Um, and so what we try to, what I try to do is obviously um, to try to stay as far away from other people as possible. Now, the good thing is um, for the most part, or I should say my experiences entirely, I've never, I haven't tried, I haven't tried, you know, showing up to Costco at six in the morning so I can get the last roll of toilet tissue. So I haven't done that. So I don't know how that's like. What I do know is if you, you know, go at or whatever, six, seven in the evening, there's probably about 20, 30 people in the grocery store, if that, in this mm -hmm. massive like Safeway or something or Target. And so, you know, you're not running the risk of like coming in real close, close proximity to one another. And what I've also noticed is that for the most part, um, and some retailers or grocery stores are better than others, but, and I'm not going to, you know, name names here, but, you know, one, I, I've, I've, no, I've found that one chain in particular is really good about 
couple of things. One, they're always, always sanitizing um, the register after every single use. Mm. Um, and I've also noticed that the cashiers, um, uh, if you don't do self-checkout, that is, the cashiers are super on top of like, you know, PPE. So, you know, they've got the masks, they've got the gloves. Oh, really? Yeah. I've, yeah, man, it's surreal. Wow. Um, like going to your neighborhood grocery store and seeing people all, you know, um, PPE'd out. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. there's that. And then um, uh, on a personal level, I carry, you know, my own little hand sanitizer and stuff. And so anytime <laughs> I'm, when I get into the car, from the grocery store after checking out, I wipe myself mm -hmm. down, my hands yeah. down. I, I avoid touching my face, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And then when I get home, I I, I do a little bit of disinfecting of the products um, that I that I've purchased. Even though I will say I've heard a number of interviews with like Dr. Um, Dr. Anthony um, Fauci, who has said that um, you know that's probably something that you don't need to do because just in general, Corona doesn't do as well on most surfaces, although on cardboard and metal surfaces, it, it, it you know, it does survive, but that's like doorknobs and commonly touched, mm -hmm. like, you know, think, you know, like, yeah. So avoid going to like, obviously the public restroom and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, like if you're buying like a sack of potato chips or something, the likelihood that the virus is going to live on the bag of potato chips is pretty minimal. So but anyway, in spite okay. of that, I still, okay. yeah, in spite of I'm that. I'm going to upgrade you to a 3.5. Oh, okay, fine, <laughs> fine. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump you up. Yeah, okay, um, cool. Yeah, um, so yeah, so, but, but, but again, uh, you know, better safe than sorry or the yeah. abundance of caution. I do come home and disinfect everything before putting it away in the pantry. So again, okay. that's my ritual, but that's okay. it. I, have, I don't go anywhere else. Um, and wife, wife and kids going out or staying home? No, no, home? like I said, I'm, I'm kind of the, I'm like the guy, you know, if, yeah. if you know, I'm not trying to be selfless here or say I'm some, you know, you know, whatever. Yeah, I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, I'm like, look, I'll, I'll be the one guy who's the designated, um, the designated. Uh, you're not sending your, house. you're not telling your 12 year old to be like, okay, no. go, okay. I'm going to stay in the car. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take um, one for the team. <laughs> so, so, uh, and, and maybe this will impact, I don't know if this will impact or uh, bring me back down to a three from a 3.5, but um, I've gone bike riding with the kids. No problem. Okay. Don't yeah, come into contact awesome. with anyone. Um, and obviously we're not touching anything. So, but uh, yeah. And uh, oh, another thing I'll say, um, if you are going out, folks, try to make it a habit of uh, leaving your shoes outside. So don't bring in your shoes, leave them outside and then carry them to wherever you normally keep your shoes. So if it's like the garage or, or whatever, um, I'd avoid bringing shoes into the house, period. So, um, and I know in most Muslim households, generally speaking, like shoes sit in either some shelf in a garage or some shelf in a shoe closet or something, that's fine. Just don't wear it into the house. So well, man, um, I, I'm you're really making me, super, sorry. You're making me think of downgrading myself to a 4.8 based <laughs> oh, on what you uh -oh. said. I'm not as, I don't wear shoes um, in the house. I don't, we I, don't. No, 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 of course not. I don't wear shoes in the house. I mean, you know. And I think, I think that's probably safe to assume that most Muslim families kind of- Most Asian, that. most Asian. Most Asian, you're right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, most Asian. Right. Right. Um, but I think, I think I do wear, I do leave shoes in the quote unquote entrance and that's mm. a bit of a gray area because there's indoor slippers in the entrance too. Right. Oh so, yeah. You want to yeah. avoid cross contamination. So. Yeah. I'll be a little careful there. I, yeah. But I, I've been like, I've been like, like I said, um, my daughter has not left the house. I basically <laughs> feed her. Earlier you said she hasn't left her room. I hope she's not in her like some, <laughs> like certainly house arrest. No, no, by no, default, no. She, but... She's left her room, but she hasn't okay. left the house. I basically call her out for food. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> other than that, she's in her room. She's, she's, she's got a TV in her room now. I moved it down there and she's got her phone and her laptop. She's really on top of her homework. You know what? Sorry. What I'm not envisioning is I, that I, I should picture half of your house is, is sort of boarded up and it is you know is. so i'm forgetting that so I, I would imagine under normal circumstances you guys would have been a lot more mobile around the house right would yeah yeah be? and i'm just kind of halfway joking about the, her, we're mobile in the house but you're, okay. you're, under, you're actually right our house looks like you know in the movies where they plastic off the i remember or i saw it what a month ago two months ago yeah or like or even an outbreak or those those <laughs> contagion movies where they actually put plastic it actually yeah, looks yeah. like there's plastic everywhere it does um, it was actually open air until um, a couple days into the quarantine when they had stopped work but 
uh, we were at home. Yeah. I basically called the guy. I'm like, it's freezing in the house. Right. Uh, can you come and board up at least the open? Good. Like, there's open windows and whatnot, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, all yeah. boarded up. So it's now secure. Good. Um, but um, the other thing I'd call my daughter out now is to pray. I mean, it was a, this is actually a good oh. opportunity to actually connect on prayer because I couldn't really manage it before. And it was just like leaving her to do her own thing. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. has been an opportunity to be like, Double, you know, to, to enforce that a bit, and, and yeah, you yeah. have to enforce it a bit with twelve-year-olds, right? But um, no, you're right, and uh, I can't tell you like of late, um, we have uh, prayed together as a family now, um, at least two prayers a day, if not more, sometimes, but at least a minimum of two. Like that is, you know, Maghrib, the evening yeah. and the night prayer. Um, so that's been really good. You're, you're, yeah. you're I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because that's yeah. very true, and and I think. I want to, I know we wanted to talk about some of the spiritual religious mm -hmm. sort of, and, and we'll get to that maybe in a second. Um, but yeah, why don't we kind of finish up like, you no, know, I was just going to say, I've been, I've been, I've been that pretty strict. So I've been you doing are. Yeah. hundred percent, um, Amazon okay. groceries. Any tips for um, people? Because um, I imagine, <laughs> I, you know, it's hard to find a slot and I'm probably giving a, I'm going to break the, break the, the, the tip here just by sharing it. But 12.01 AM is a great time to get Amazon delivery slots. Cause otherwise it can be kind of hard. What does that um, mean, 1201? So to a guy who's... Who so, oh, okay. So when you open the app and you order on Amazon and you hit check out, you get in for home delivery, whether it's Amazon Fresh or Amazon Whole Foods, whatever it is. Um, Not Prime. Um, if you're part of Prime now, you get Amazon Fresh delivered to you, which is your home, your grocery delivery. Okay. Because well, I'm a Prime. Fun. Yeah. I'm a Prime member, but I don't use, like, I've never ordered Amazon Fresh or anything. So you can now. It's all okay. it's all like under one umbrella. Just like Got you it. get Prime Video and you yep, get yep. all those things, right? So it's a benefit. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about Netflix and, <laughs> and Disney Plus and streaming oh, yeah. services coming to the rescue. Okay. Oh yeah, the the all the all the kind of the economic <laughs> reverberations. Oh yeah, yeah, it. that and just I'm saying, uh, you know, just the amount of I imagine binge watching a lot of people are doing. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, so 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 twelve one a.m. is a good. Start. So people are having trouble delivering. I'm like, why bother going to the grocery store if I don't have to? The yeah. Bay Area, it's all it's all built in. The tech is there. Um, there's a couple there's a couple areas where I've needed to go the, to to the pharmacy or the grocery store, and I just been making do without mm. um, without you know whatever. Just so making do. For example, I I was running out of milk, and <laughs> I I just added the leftover half and half to the to the skim milk, right, and made made like whole milk out of it and stretched it out two, three days. So I'm it. just being resourceful. I'm going through my fr freezer and yeah. finding food that maybe has been there a couple months that yeah, yeah, I hear would have you. just gotten wasted, you know, Same here. and just being yeah. resourceful. And then other than that, again, this isn't a plug, but I'm using a home delivery food service uh, called the uh, HelloFresh. They basically deliver your meals and you make them at home. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been working. But you've been well. using but, that. I mean, that, that, yeah. that, that's been a staple in your household. Yeah. prior to coronavirus yeah that's right and then and then the funny thing is when i do get the groceries i am uh following that that video you may have seen that's gone viral where the guy um basically washes his groceries so i, I he's I, a doctor I, yeah yeah that's oh good. really really yeah, so, he is a doctor yeah he is oh a, interesting mm -hmm. yeah i basically took the groceries he, out of the he's not out just of the a germaphobe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was a, just a germaphobe um, <laughs> No, but I took them out of the bag they were delivered in, left those bags outside, switched them to new bags, filled up the sink with so slightly soapy water, anything that I could wash, fruit, but also plastic, like a milk cartons uh, from the quote unquote waste down, <laughs> I washed the milk cartons and then uh, wiped everything else down and took the loaf of bread. Anyway, so did all that. If you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. taking some walks just to stay, stay active a bit, right? And that's about it. Yeah, you know, I'm, and I'm actually interested you raise that because I know you were on a pretty good regimen in terms of working out, going to the gym. Um, I don't know if you you had invested in any equipment at the home, uh, but no, but I sure I like? I sure wish I had a Peloton or um, a Tonal. If you tonal. know, Tonal. I was gonna say, hey, how, for, how can you not plug Tonal? Yeah, <laughs> got a plug uh, for those of you in the Bay Area. You may know Ali Arati, uh, founder, CEO, founder of Tonal. That would be it. That would have been an awesome, awesome. Um, Ali, by the way. Yeah. So you didn't finish, but yeah, Ali's an old friend of yours. Um, uh, a, a good friend of mine as well. But I mean, I met him through you. Um, uh, although his family's from Michigan and I knew his family prior to actually, I think meeting him in person. 
Um, yeah, a nice little plug for Tonal. You know, it's yeah, yeah, funny plug for Tonal. tonal. Well, it's funny you say that because um, I actually saw my first uh, ad, like Tonal ad on TV. It was like during CNN. We were watching CNN, and oh, nice. Um, yeah, we watched through YouTube TV. I don't know if that makes a difference. If that's what normal um, cable <laughs> cable connectors would be uh, seeing, but. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I was, I was pretty elated to see Tonal uh, kind of prime time ad slot, man. I was nice. like, way to go, Ali. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, normally I go to 24 Hour Fitness, but that's the last yeah. place you want to go down there. No. They're all shut well, down. Well, it's all shut down anyway, yeah. Uh, they are charging, they are charging their customers. Their, the, the auto, the, the recurring billing hasn't gone away, but that's a separate conversation. Now. Dude, that should be um, like, there should be like a hotline, you know? I was thinking like California should get ahead of this as well. Like reports of price gouging or... You know, like for example, we have. Um, I think they've they've asked that utility companies don't shut people off and things like mm -hmm. that. But I would think like there should be some sort of like a hotline where people can call and be like, "Yo, this is you know, it's not right." Like, I mean, yes I get no. it from a business perspective, yeah. like twenty four hour fitness or let, let's say any gym. Forget about the name, um, any gym doing that, but it seems a little unfair to me. Yeah, I, you could you could make a, an argument both sure. ways, but I, I get your sure. point. I get your yeah. point. Um, you know, like I said. So um, I'm a little different, as you know, Omar. I, I don't yeah. have a gym membership, but I we had uh, we had some equipment at the house, which is mm -hmm. I, I can't. It's it's come in handy so oh, lately, especially huge. so yeah, big time. So yeah. um, which I, I guess maybe now is a good point as any since we're talking about personal hygiene and just practicing general safety tips. Is, so, is this a pivot to toilet paper? No, <laughs> <laughs> or or a bidet or or yeah, a yeah, exactly. or yeah, proper washing techniques. Um, <laughs> no, or, or maybe on a related, somewhat related note, as I was going to say, like one thing guys and listeners, you know, I think we can all kind of take heed of is, you know, this is a good opportunity to kind of check in and see where we are with regards to our own health. Because at the end of the day, um, this is a virus like other viruses in the sense, only in the sense, and I'm not here to you know, tout a party line or to downplay or upgrade or, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I, maybe that, like, that's another conversation. We'll bash but, on Trump later in the Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's plenty of time for that and plenty of reason and due cause. Um, but what I was going to say is like, like any other virus or infection or um, morbidity, um, you know, you can increase the odds of uh, safeguarding yourself from infection by just doing things that you that you should be doing. One, we've already talked about and I think has been discussed time and time again in recent days and weeks is proper hygiene. Uh, just just general tips, right? Wash your hands, don't touch your face frequently, you know, things like that. Um, if you're going to cough, you know, practice uh, the sunnah, my, uh, which I should probably mention or worth mentioning, which is to cough, cough in one's garment or to cough in one's elbow. Um, um, so, um, anyway, uh, just general sort of hy hygienic tips like that, but also boost your own immune system. Eat right, um, exercise, um, whatever sort of immune um, or you know immune boost you can do by eating certain foods that are uh, uh, nutritious and dense in vitamins. Um, maybe a daily regimen of like a multivitamin, vitamin C, vitamin D, or really good zinc. Uh, these are just normal things that probably we should be doing or we should have been doing whether we are, we're dealing with a pandemic or not, which is just just general tips like that that you do and, or we, that we all should be doing. So this is probably a good time as any to kind of check in and see where we are with regards to our own kind of self-care, right? Absolutely. And, and jokingly, when you said that if you cough in public, I was, it reminded me of the, the meme going around saying like coughing in public is like saying Allahu Akbar on a plane after 9-11, right? Right. Or what's worse than that, which is to sneeze and say Alhamdulillah on a plane now. So yeah, right? <laughs> followed by, but, but the scarier part would be the sneeze and not so much the Alhamdulillah. Exactly. But no, uh, in, in all seriousness regarding health, yeah. I, I, I agree hundred yeah. percent. It's like these, anytime you have these crises, yeah. Um, they, that's when you get tested, right? So that's you want exactly to build right. up the immunity. In this case, you're talking about actual physical immune, physical actual resistance, immunity. physical immunity. Oh yeah. Um, so that you're ready for the crisis. And actually, and metaphorically that applies in other situations too. like build strong relationships with your family mm -hmm. so that when you have the tough times, your finance, the financial crisis, for example, comes up, you have the strong relationship to carry you. Right, have the good health so that when pandemic happens, 
uh, you're not in that bucket of people that are much more at risk because you have diabetes. Obesity is a risk factor. Diabetes, yeah. high blood pressure, all those things that um, I know they're big in the Asian community, right? As you get, oh you know, yeah, uh, those things are big or risk factors, right? That's right, uh, okay. and that's just fact, right? That that's not spin. Um, you know, I think the numbers are just you know de- demonstrating that. Um, you know, co- as, as, as to use a technical or a medical term, comorbidity, um, you know, impacts mortality, like mortality rates. So, so if you have underlying um, disease such as um, obesity, uh, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, um, you you uh, certain lifestyle uh, like you eat poorly, don't exercise, smoke. Those are all factors. Those are all risk factors. Heavy drinkers, alcohol and drink consumption. Um, those are all risk factors that um, can increase the odds of not only infection, but also that that morbidity or that underlying disease um, can become lethal. Yeah. Uh, or the yeah, lethality yeah. or the yeah the mortality rate. I'm so, I'm worried about my dad for that reason. He's a heart patient. Yeah. Um, he's also a professor at a college where there's a lot of young people who maybe are a little more careless. Um, luckily, the 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 college is, is is progressive and has been ahead of the curve. They closed a while ago. Now he's trying to learn. Now he's trying to learn Zoom uh, in his seventies. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, right. right. Um, I was going to ask you because I, I and I've been remiss not to reach out to to your to your mom and dad, and I, and, I, and I've been intending to do that. Um, I, I know obviously Washington was sort of initially ground zero, patient one. Um, you know, it started off with that initial those group of nursing homes in Seattle. Um, was Gonzaga or um, University, was Spokane, other parts of Washington, were they ahead of the curve in terms of um, trying to flatten that curve? Or yeah. did yeah. they follow uh, after there, California and, and New York and other places? The school's been shut down for three weeks now. I think they had spring break okay. um, on the semester system, and, and then, they have, then they've been shut down since. So they've been, they've been pretty good. Um, there's a lot of older people in the uh-huh the city so if it does hit it's it'll be it'll be um, pretty dangerous but so far the entire state of washington has done done pretty good um okay don't tell trump that because he's mad at the governor right now for not being grateful and 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 worshiping right but that's right well even even a few weeks ago you you called the governor a snake and but i think right now we're dealing or his ire primarily is with the governor of, of michigan Right. He, he no, no, no. Michigan, Washington. Um, he 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 doesn't like either of them because they're not they're they're not um, showing appreciation to all his great work. Right. That's right. That's right. Are um, we pivoting to are we are we pivoting to the Trump section of the of the show? <laughs> but, uh, up to you. We can. I know we want. We also wanted to talk about like just the kind of the economic rever- reverberations, right? Like we kind of well, hinted maybe, on Peloton, yeah, maybe Ono and twenty four yeah. fitness. Sure, sure, sure. It's yeah, funny yeah. Why don't we? Because I think I think we can pivot from there. Because I mean, I think in 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 many ways they're interrelated, right? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about Trump, we're going to talk about where we are right now, which is his, some would argue, insane idea of trying to reopen the country by Easter, um, uh, purely for economic reasons. And so I think those conversations can probably be had, um, yeah, hand in for- hand. The the economics of it is is super interesting. Yeah. Um, now you're now you. Uh, I, I mean I, I don't I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I mean you do invest in the stock market. I mean you you do watch that probably a little bit closer than I do, um, uh, which is by no means the thing. So I'm I'm remiss in that regard. But um, wh- yeah, well, what are you seeing, man? What, what what's the market looking like for you? Any? Yeah, it's a fun hobby. I can't <laughs> say I'm very good at it because I started investing in uh, just before the dot com bubble. And then, uh, and then experienced that. And then of course the financial crisis. And so I've, I've experienced kind of all three of those major, um, major challenges. I, I, you know, it's, it's definitely feels like having started my career just before the, the dot-com bubble, uh, it does sometimes feel like investing uh, for our generation can be like two steps forward, three steps back sometimes. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, and, and this is going to show how, how much of a novice I am when it comes to stuff like this. Um, I, I notice, like, sometimes you and my brother going back and forth on Twitter or something about, mm-hmm. you know, the stock market or whatever. <laughs> okay. I think even recently, and I, and I, and I, and I, 
I'll, I'll sometimes be like, okay, sometimes it, it seems like you guys are talking like a different language. Like I'm looking up. Oh, that's funny. You guys are talking about. Yeah, it's really funny. Well, the reason it's fun is because it's really, you're, you're really talking about like macroeconomics, really a macroeconomic conversation. So it is interesting. So for example, you and I, when we get together, a lot of the times we'll go to see a movie, right? Yeah. That's sometimes our, like the break we take, uh, we'll be like, hey, let's, let's catch a movie, right? And that's done. Like yeah. nobody's going to be going to the movies for a while. Movies are getting pushed out. Even when this goes away, which isn't going to be for two, three, four months, yeah, are you going to go to a movie unless you really, really have to? Like, is it going to be your number one choice for 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 uh, you know a, a break? Um, Disneyland. I know you're you're a big Disneyland uh, fan with the family, I th- and but are you know are you going to push that out maybe until next year if you're going to get to go this year? Mm-hmm. How long is Disneyland going to be closed? Like, I don't see it opening back up until at least through May is what they're saying now, but I would say we're going to go. Yeah. They'll they'll be lucky if they open before like mid to late summer. Exactly. So that's, that's huge. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, We talked about like Peloton. I I wish I had it in my home. Right. Zoom. Zoom is going crazy. Amazon's going crazy. Um, People are in the sense of they're doing really well. Yeah. yeah, Haven't been hit as well. Like like for example, it was so funny. My, my daughter uh, got on a zoom call. Oh yeah, my, like my daughter my uses do, Zoom every morning to log in with her teacher in her class. My wife, who's never used Zoom in her life, didn't even know what Zoom was. Yeah, because again, my wife doesn't come from a corporate background. Um, she never used Zoom in her life. Um, well, well, I got on Zoom with my daughter, and my my uh, you know my my younger one. She's a bit feisty. She's <laughs> she's definitely got a bit of fire to her. But I got on. It was my first time on Zoom, and we had all the cousins and uh, my, meaning meaning my nieces and nephews. And she was like kept asking anybody any questions like she had taken moderator charge of the and I was like where did she get that and then my wife was like oh she got it because that earlier that morning her teacher was saying any questions students so (laughs) that's so precious it was was pretty hilarious but but basically she had been on that was her second zoom call that day right (laughs) I can't yeah. get over that. that Any hilarious. questions? <laughs> she she just thought that that was like the vernacular you have to yeah, talk yeah, in exactly. when you're on a Zoom like call, every, right? Exactly. After every call, she's like, and after every kind of comment, she's like, "Any questions?" But um, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this is going to have impacts yeah. uh, far beyond what we can even imagine, right? Yeah, I mean, we're talking, uh, we're recording again on the 28th, which is a weekend. Um, this week uh, that just preceded us, uh, record, record-breaking a number of unemployment claims, uh, upward of 3 million, which is the largest number since they've ever tracked unemployment uh, mm-hmm. claims um, uh, or applications. So, yeah, I mean, and, and predictions go... I don't know what you're seeing or what you trust, but I mean, I'm seeing predictions anywhere from, you know, 20% unemployment when all is said and done or when the dust settles to upwards of 30%. Now, which just by, just by virtue of, um, of a baseline, um, you know, during the great depression, we had a 25% unemployment rate. So sort of keeping that in or, you it'll know, be hard to say what it is. I've heard it's going to be like a major spike down and yeah. then it'll recover pretty quickly, but the problem Correct. You're a small business, uh-huh. um, and you're not ha- you don't have a lot of profit margins. And just for as a case study, let's talk um, Mirchi Cafe, right? Like, look at a company like Mir- a, a former, restaurant. Former guest of the show, Lisa. Yeah, Aji, Lisa Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, and they don't sell alcohol, so their margins are probably you know they're not like your typical alcohol selling restaurant. And, the, and at the same time, you have a lease, and you have you have all this inventory, and you have a lease which you have to pay. Um, we you know. I'm a huge um, fan of them, so I definitely pray pray that they come out of this. So right, but that's a good example of somebody who you wonder like, can they can they make it to the other end? I mean, people who make it to the other end will be fine because the you know once this is all said and done, things should go relatively back to normal. But it's, it's the challenge for people who may not even make it through. Who the may month, not make it exactly, right? exactly. And we're seeing that. Right? We're seeing that. And it, you know, it's funny you mentioned that until very recently. You know, I I that like you mentioned about Mirchi's not selling alcohol and, mm-hmm. and that's where a lot of these restaurants make their large margins. Um, I didn't even know that. Like I, I was watching a news report where they were talking about a lot of these um, restaurants that have now gone purely um, to delivery mm-hmm. um, that uh, 
that's limited primarily to food. They're not delivering alcohol. So, oh, yeah. so, so because of that, even though they're still getting business, you know, uh, vis-a-vis, you know, delivery, their, their, their profit margins just aren't there because of the fact that they made those margins up with alcohol sales. So yeah. Mm-hmm. What about Muslim restaurants who for them, it's never been, uh, you know, or mm-hmm. for, I mean, for the most part have never been, um, you know, able to, to count on that margin of, of, by alcohol sales. Yeah. And then there's the waiters, right. Who aren't getting right. tips. Yeah. Um, who are letting, go, who are getting let go. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. like you take a, again, you take a, uh, a, a restaurant or a, um, uh, you know, like, yeah, if you take Mirchie's as an example, uh, I pause just because they have two locations and there's, they have, they also have a deli, but um, nonetheless, um, all of those facilities are now closed. And so in terms of brick and mortar locations, if they're inshallah, God willing, they're able to weather the storm. I imagine, I imagine, again, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't reached out and I don't have confirmation of this, but you know, what about those restaurants or you take Mirchie's as an example that will have to let go or cut staff, um, you know, cut waiting staff, cut uh, cooks, et cetera, um, between now and when, when, when the storm is over or when we get on the other, hump, uh, other side of the, of the curve, as yeah. it were. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, things are not going to go back to normal, even though a lot of, I think, yeah, like you said, there will be an initial um, bounce back, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's gonna be there's gonna be people recover fast. Uh-huh. And company there's gonna, from an economics point of view, there'll be po- people who thrive actually, like the Zooms uh-huh. or the Pelotons. Then there'll be the people who recover fast. Then there'll be some people the neutral, and then there'll be the the hit for a long time, and then there'll be the people who just drown, right? And right. so this is gonna go, and that's why they're calling. They're actually saying there's a generational moment, like you know you how you had baby boomers and 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 uh, you know Gen X millennials gen z now now they're calling them anybody born like in the past couple years who say five years old like my daughter who's seven Mm -hmm. um she they're gonna call them gen c right gen generation coronavirus um it's kind of a joke but it's it's actually true they are gonna have their own experiences my my daughter again she's a bit dramatic but she was like daddy i just want to have a normal childhood you know whether (laughs) like you and mama not with a virus um so it's, it's, it's like you're smiling but then it's you're also kind of like oh that's unfortunate she had to she has to uh be that's a, right be of it. yeah yeah i mean yeah certainly this new century uh we're, we're 20 years in but it's been it's been quite quite a century i think we've lived a lifetime just in these 20 years yeah what do they say i've i've lived in five decades the the the, the 70s 80s 90s or the 80s 90s 2000s 2010s and march <laughs> Yeah, I saw that meme. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, on the economic side of things, yeah. Uh, so I think in addition to what just, like the week that just passed, I mean, and they're, again, they're, they're expecting those numbers to go up in terms of unemployment um, um, unemployment numbers. And deaths. What about deaths, right? Then that's the, the deaths number is what's really going to be scary. In about two to three weeks, um, if you look at the curve, the yeah. deaths are going to start peaking. I mean, you're going to mm-hmm. start getting thousands in the U.S. I think thousand Thursday plus night, deaths. Per day. Yeah, Thursday night was our biggest overnight, or or one day, which was I think like two hundred and or a hundred and something deaths. But that's yeah, yeah that's that's going to go up, and um, yeah. certainly the number of uh, of infected are going to go up. Just to, that's just by virtue of testing. Um, people are already infected, but they just don't know it, uh, either because they're asymptomatic or they haven't been tested, which um, um, I, I guess just by way of anecdotal evidence, um, I have a someone in the in the family. Um, actually, I have a few people in the family who are on the front lines, as it were. Um, I have two family members very close to me, or you know, but um, yeah. So I have two very I have two family members uh, on my wife's side in my family who are both ER physicians. I also have another family member who is a critical care pulmonologist and. Um, yeah, so they're they're on the front lines in terms of uh, treating COVID uh, nineteen patients, um, uh, of, uh, intubating patients, uh, doing it. You know, and it's that's like a face to face procedure. Um, and we've heard the news, we've seen the news reports, and it's as bad as you're hearing in terms of doctors and and nurses and people in the medical profession who are on the front lines dealing with. Um, apocalyptic, I think, was the description that someone described, um, or someone described a New York hospital. Um, 
and 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 the family members I mentioned aren't in New York per se, but they're 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 seeing those same kind of numbers and conditions um, and having to make do with minimal resources by way of uh, personal protective uh, equipment, you know, PPE, et cetera, ventilators, and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I had a, one of them, one of one of the ER physicians in my family. You know, she started um, feeling symptoms uh, about two days ago. Um, and so yesterday she got tested uh, for COVID-19 and, you know, alhamdulillah, it came out negative, um, but that the, she got the test results back today. Um, and so hopefully we're seeing, um, uh, you know, a, an improvement in terms of the ability or the turnaround of these tests, right? The ability of people getting tested and the, um, how long it takes, because we've heard, we, I think, anyone who's followed social media or the news has heard the horror stories of people waiting eight, nine, 10 days in some cases for their test results, which is absolutely nerve wracking and unacceptable on, on many levels. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're right, Omer. I mean, I think, you know, right now, like I said, we're on March 28th. I, I mentioned the numbers at the outset of the show. That's where we're at. But, you know, right now we are, we are doubling every two to three days. Yeah. And we are, and, and if you look at what's happening in Italy, um, you know, uh, Italy's numbers, are, they still haven't gotten, they still haven't crossed the curve as it were. Um, yeah, it's pretty scary. I mean, I mean, that's scary news about your family member. Uh, uh -huh. And, and forget like the, the, forget the challenge that the medical into the field, the doctors, the nurses are facing regard to equipment. What about the fear of bringing something home, right? Oh yeah. And getting sick yourself or bringing it home to your kid. That's I know people, scary. yeah, I know doctors, again, not the ones I just mentioned, but people who are living separately, they are, they are living in a hotel or they're living, yeah, or even when they come home, the procedures mm -hmm. that they go through to quarantine and to, you know, isolate themselves initially, at least, um, even if you're asymptomatic, I mean, I just know the ritual that they go through when they come home, um, yeah. because many so of props. them do have, yeah, yeah, so many of them have young everybody children. who's who's on the front lines for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um They're, So, uh yeah, I mean <laughs> it's going to get it's going to get bad. I mean, you know one thing I realize is like how thing how fast things can change and they can I mean, they always say things can change in an instant and, and like are you know here you hear in the in the khutbas and whatnot that like death can come in an instant this could be your last prayer i feel like this was kind of like a glimpse into that and it was probably slow compared to what things could have been meaning we had a few months but it felt it felt very sudden it felt very like drop off a cliff and in in reality it wasn't we just weren't seeing the signs which is probably a sign in and of itself <laughs> but um it felt very sudden like i remember even in january um saying ah you know this isn't this is this is not gonna end and you know and and end the world type situation kind of being a skeptic myself and 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 this is a situation where my company has a big office in wuhan so oh, wow. we were we were like on top of it in terms of closing our our wuhan office all our china employees and taiwan employees and whatnot korea all our apac employees were basically working from home so this was like top of mind and even then i was like ah not a big deal not gonna come home and then, and then it just accelerated, and then, and then now we're hitting a situation where it could. Well, be I, I, I thought, I thought when you said we didn't see it coming, or 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 we didn't see the signs as kind of being almost like a philosophical conversation, because I think in yeah. some ways it did, it did come up, come about suddenly, um, and just to give you numbers, and and you know, again, we're, I think, kind of bearing the lead in terms of wanting to talk about Trump. But, you know, um, you know, it was on February 26th, and I, because I have the quote here. So February 26th, it was what, uh, a month, like a month and three days ago, um, when Trump famously said, you know, you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down close to zero. That's a pretty good, good job we've done. That's a quote. Um, so he, you know, February 26th, we had 15 known cases. As I said, the numbers today are, uh, you know, 113,000 plus. Yeah. So it has accelerated. In in here's in, here's my thought about that, that I'm thinking about with um, with regard to Trump. Sure. People say like it doesn't matter; they're all the same. And yeah, he's narcissistic, but at the end of the day, Paul, you know, Paul Washington's Washington. It's all. That's actually not true. In my, it this, and this, this is how that. I feel. Yeah. This is it's happening at such a large scale 
that the difference between one decision and another or one day and another could mean literally thousands and thousands of lives That's because right. things are moving so fast and having such scale to them. Um, right. And the curves, curves can be very different depending on how you act or don't act or what you spend or what policy you have. So we're seeing literally like the chickens coming home to roost in terms of electing a narcissist for the White House, right? Because again, one dad decision or even not making the decision in a timely fashion yeah. will have a completely different effect on the flattening of the curve. And one example you're seeing is Gavin Newsom. Um, Gavin oh, Newsom, yeah. the, the governor of California, he took very decisive action. And now, I'm, yeah, I will, I will um, put it out there. I'm, I've become a total fanboy now because I think he's done such a great job. Yeah. But, um, well, I was going to say, you know, I, I know one of the things we were going to, talk, to try to talk about, which is, you know, what are, you know, kind of the glass half full, like some, what are some of the positives that we've experienced um, during this time? But, you know, one of the things I'm very, very grateful for is federalism. Thank God for uh, America's um, yeah. federalism um, and our, our, you know, the way we govern, because um, we've seen some real leadership on mm -hmm. the local, and by local, I mean state government level, right? State governor level. Um, yeah. Whether it's Cuomo in, in, in New York or, uh, uh, or you know, Newsom right here in, in, in California. So yeah. uh, I agree, and, wholeheartedly and agree. I, what I've, what I've, 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 come, I've read is the local leaders, meaning government, state level, state have done, city, have done city a great mayors. job. City, yeah. state. Um, and then the people, the average Joe, right? Mm -hmm. The average Joe uh, folks, neighbors who are reaching out, who are um, like, of course, your front lines, your medical doctors, your nurses, your PAs, your, your hospital workers, all those, your, your food delivery people. Like these people are, um, you know, people are, people, are, people are behaving pretty good so far. You're not seeing... You're not seeing, I mean, you're seeing a little bad behavior, but you're seeing a lot of good behavior too. You know, you're seeing people reach out to one another. Um, I've had experiences where people are uh, reaching out and, and just checking up and seeing how you're, seeing how you're doing. So that, that's a bit of humanity you're seeing, right? And um, yeah. that's a bit of a silver lining. Agreed, agreed. And, and people making do with uh, this social distancing, right? Meaning, not being able to see loved ones, not being able to visit. Um, and you, you know, again, there's plenty of videos and memes and stuff so on out there in terms of wh the way people are connecting um, while still maintaining safe, safe distance, whether it's grandchildren or, or grandparents being able to see their grandchildren, you know, through, you know, like a glass of a window or through a front, you know, by sitting on the front lawn, you know, 20 feet apart or what, ha what have you. Um, it's, it is heartwarming, it, it really yeah, is. Yeah. And you're seeing people's humanity um, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of like uh, uh, volunteerism in terms of people delivering food to those who are elderly or those who are, um, in, you know, infirmed and can't be out there or shouldn't be out there. And so um, I know a lot of local charities here in the Bay Area and I imagine nationally as well that have set up, you know, um, the opportunities for people to volunteer and be able to drive food and, and leave food at people's doorsteps in terms of food delivery to you know people who are otherwise incapable or unable to leave their homes um, mm -hmm. because of their age or because of illness. So there are even yeah. grocery stores offering like senior citizens hours in the morning, right? Right, right. Seen a bit of that, but uh, well, we're no, seeing that. We're seeing uh, I think even corporations, right, step mm -hmm. up. Um, I, I know Elon Musk uh, and you know the way he's been able to turn around the, uh, uh, his Tesla factory and producing um, PPE and, and even perhaps respirators. Uh, I think GM is another one and there's others. Um, you know, Zoom, we've talked about Zoom, but Zoom offered uh, their platform for free mm -hmm. to educators to use. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, we're seeing that. I mean, we, we certainly are seeing instances of corporate greed as well. Um, um, you know, we've talked about Amazon, but it's, it's sort of sad to see uh, you know, Amazon employees or Amazon having to crowdsource for, you know, sick leave. I mean, that, that bothers me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. Some, I know. Yeah, for we've sure. We've got some Jeff Bezos fans probably listening, but uh, I don't know. Prove me wrong. I mean, uh, you know, um, yeah. I, no, I, no, wish, I hear you on that. I, saw, I, I wish you. I saw more. And, you know, um, but I will say this, like, for example, someone, I think, uh, I think it was Zuckerberg pledged 20 billion or something, 20, right? Some, some really 
you Please. could look at that as like i said people are people, people that, are memeing the fact yeah. that it's like a drop <laughs> yeah exactly but exactly. i'm like you know that's the to me i'm not i'm not willing to go that far right yeah yeah I or even it. bill gates before him or you know tomorrow jeff bezos steps up like i'm not here to relativize them to shame yeah. um you know but i i wish we did see more in, you know from the so-called you know job creators and you know i wish i could i saw more of that trickle down um generosity from the people who believe in trickle down, you know, um, economics. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll be. I mean, we're we. It's it's uh, the, the 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 we. I don't think we'll even fully realize what all what's 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 going on here. You know, I think I, there is a spiritual dimension to this. Well, yeah, but before I you know before we go there, I I I, you know, I did want to kind of you know um, uh, piggyback on what you said about Trump. Um, just, just you know, and again, I you know. We could do this entire show and do nothing but bash Trump and mm -hmm. the the response time and the fatigue in terms of responding initially in the last like four to six weeks back in January or February. But I think to your point, Omar, um, about oh, it's all Washington. Oh, you know, would it have been would it have been truly different if it was Barack Obama or if it was Hillary Clinton instead of you know? And and I think that you're right. I mean not so much, even if we didn't see differences on the policy level, um, and, and we can argue about that or discuss that, but I think just, you know, the president as being the voice. Comforter-in-chief. Uh, exactly, comforter-in-chief, that role, or and how important that is. And, and you know, when, when people hear from the Oval Office that, vo that, that voice of reassurance and calm and, and, and you know, you 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 have credibility in what the person is saying um that goes a long way and 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 that's where you know you can really alleviate the uh the trauma of people's uh you know frustrations or uh um, fear or anxiety levels around what's happening and and we're just not, that's what we're i think are you know uh, again beyond just how ill equipped trump is to handle a crisis like this because of his lack of, of a political, you know, kind of will or a political background, it, it's really in terms of his lack of ability to show empathy, his lack of ability to connect on a human level, and 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 and, and that is what we're really seeing—the kind of vacuum and that kind of leadership, right? Where I would argue, certainly, where there was Barack Obama dealing with the swine flu or the Ebola crisis, I mean, you, you had from the top down kind of this this voice of reassurance. Um, and that's what we see being sorely missed today, right? Because of the fact that you have a personality type in the White House who is incapable of just, you know, uh, speaking and connecting on that basic human level. The lack of empathy and the yeah. narcissism, they right. result in both bad policy and lack of leadership from a, from a comforter in chief point of view. Sure, like sure. A, it's like a double, double whammy, right? And you know, you 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 a personality like his tends to surround himself by people who are going to be yes men, right? Mm -hmm. And and people who don't laud his, you know, who don't uh, shower him with praise, uh, do not talk about what a great job he's done, are going to be publicly shamed, or they're going to be silenced within the administration, uh, or he's going to take to Twitter and attack them, like he did the governor of uh, of, uh, of of Washington or Michigan or. He's had a few spats with Andrew Cuomo, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas the governor of Florida has played nice, so he likes him, or the governor of Texas has played played nice, so he likes him. You know that kind of narcissism, right? I mean that, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, it, uh, you know, the, the, you want this thing to be resolved and life back to normal. Yeah. Um, but uh, in some ways, you you also. Uh, obviously that that is the most the priority things going back to normal for everyone from a health perspective but you i i do want him to to not get reelected as and coming taking this as a win or, a, or you know taking this as being yeah. a wartime president and riding the riding the wave or a victory right you don't want that to see that either yeah and and we're getting a little long here so but I, you know i i and frankly to me a cognate of this is a, is a, is a discussion of what's happening on the democratic side because unfortunately you know, I, we just aren't seeing the kind of leadership that I would have hoped to have seen from the opposition. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I know Joe Biden finally decided to kind of, uh, you know, uh, make some public remarks this week. But, you know, you had about a four week period where he was the presumptive nominee 
um, and you had this complete vacuum in terms of any response from yep. the Biden folks. Problem. Uh, yeah, big, big problem. problem. And uh, meanwhile, you know, and again, whether you're a Bernie supporter or not, I mean, Bernie being in the Senate was still able to demonstrate leadership, and he did mm-hmm. so with the passing of the uh, of the stimulus package, right? Of making sure that those who who, who are hourly employees and so on, um, you know, got what? Yeah. Now, and 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 last thing I'll say is uh, check yeah. out that video of Bernie saying <laughs> saying like sarcastically how big of a deal it was for them to get a few extra bucks someone making 12 dollars an hour yeah exactly yes, exactly possible. maybe a conversation for another day to be continued. that's right that's right um yeah and i guess worth noting yeah the senate has passed that two trillion two trillion plus dollar bill which again let's go back and look at 2008 versus now um the republicans uh tried to uh you know back when we were in the economic meltdown um, you know, if you look at the numbers, uh, the $2 trillion stimulus package that was just passed, passed by a 96 to zero vote. Um, whereas if you look at the numbers of what Obama was able to pass in 2008, it was very, very different numbers. I don't have the numbers offhand, but um, because the Republicans that controlled the House and the Senate were unwilling to work with Obama. And, you know, so anyway, um, to me, politics are not equal and it's not a zero sum game. And so I think it's, that's that's I guess that's a reflection or reminder or where we're processing where we are is uh, elections matter. <laughs> the the just, chickens came, coming home to roost. Yeah, yeah. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, elections matter. Um, to your point, Omar, I think we'll, we can kind of end with this, which is um, the kind of spiritual, religious, or metaphysical kind of implications here. Um, yeah. So how how do you how are you sitting with this? I mean, I know. You know, to me, I'm seeing like like to me, there's two extremes, right? Either you see this as sort of like God's punishment and wrath, and you kind of interpret everything you see that is playing out in that lens, or you see this as, you know, the, you know, as sort of God testing us, right? Or um, an opportunity for the humanity, like we were talking about, for you know, the ability of human beings to connect. Um, you know, where we're seeing dramatic changes in environmental conditions, just because people are staying home. Um, you know, they were talking about air quality in LA and air quality in parts of China um, that are seeing huge changes. Um, I think dolphins swimming in Venice. I didn't even know dolphins swam in Venice. Um, so, you know, um, is it that, or is this like, is this the wrath of God kind of Avenger God kind of thing? Um, so I think you- it's both. I think it's both, but I'm also, and, and, you know, for those of you who know me, but also maybe you'll see this as the show goes on in future episodes, I tend to be, um, as, and as Muslims are, the, a believer in God's mercy out, you know, uh, out, uh, outweighs his, his wrath, right? It, or, Correct. Uh, so I, I definitely am, am always looking. It, it's it's said over. in our tradition that, like in a hadith, that that's written on his throne, you know. Yeah. Uh, Rahmati sabakhat adabi, like my 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 mercy prevails over my wrath. And that and that's I'm a I'm a big believer in that. That's like one of my very core um, tenets of faith, I guess, that keep keep uh, keep me connected. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think there's both. I do think there's a a, a bit of like. Uh, what I post on Facebook, this feels like a warning shot from God, right? In terms of, in terms of taking care of one another, the earth, all that sort of stuff. I I tend to be sometimes too glass half full, and if you're if you're too glass half full, sometimes you miss the warning or sign. The forever optimist, get out. <laughs> no, but you'll. So for example, like I said, you know, even denying that this is this is going to be a big deal, right? Yeah. And being like, ah, it's, I don't see, I think it's a China thing, right? It's not going to come to our shores. Um, so you, you, you want to be glass half full, but you don't want to necessarily be, and, I'm, and this is a reminder of my, to myself, you don't want to be such an idealist that you don't see reality. Um, so I think it's a bit of both. I think there's positives that can come out of it, like small things like praying Jamaat with your kids because you're home or, um, you know, calling, calling your parents more often than you normally would. Or, or breaking the routine of the rat race and, and, and that, that routine that you've been doing for decades, you know, if you've been working in um, corporate America for that long. So there's a bit of that. Um, but there's also a warning sign of like, okay, we've been kind of electing narcissists and are, and we're not taking, looking at, we're not looking at how we can work 
together to handle crises. We're not, you know, we're not, we're kind of all doing our own thing and nationalism and all that, right? So I think, I think it's a bit of a warning, but also an, an opportunity. It's an opportunity for a reboot, yeah. Um, you know, um, one of the verses that, and not, you know, maybe this is a good point to, or maybe we can reflect on this together and then close out the show. But, um, you know, for our listeners, if you go to Surah Baqarah, which is the second chapter of the Quran, uh, uh, verse, uh, I think it's 155, but I could be wrong. But, uh, you know, it says, um, where God will test you, um, or surely we, we will test you with something from fear and hunger. Uh, and and a diminishing, uh, like a nuksan, right? A, a diminishing of your wealth, of yourselves, like your lives and your fruit. So like, you know, vegetation. So that in glad tidings be, those, be to those who are patient. Um, I've been just reflecting over sitting with this verse a lot because it, to me, really kind of speaks to where we are today where we're seeing this, um, where we're seeing fear and anxiety and uncertainty. Um, and, and God's telling us that, look, God tests you with something. It says, you know, uh, like God is testing you from something of fear, like not fear, like rampant, but just a taste. It's like a taste of fear, uh, a taste of diminishing of your wealth. And we were talking about the economic rep, Reverber, uh, uh, like the uh, economic impact and the reverberations that we're seeing, um, and then a diminishing of your lives, like we're seeing the debt, like the debt toll rising, um, and then you know what is like glad tidings, glad tidings be to those who are patient, and so that virtue of or the opportunity that we have to sit with this and, and kind of reflect on this and um, the way, you know how we can not only demonstrate our humanity but our sober and patience in god's decree and sober and patience with what we're experiencing um that becomes sort of the ultimate test of our of, of our metal and our humanity is yeah. you know can we maintain pers- uh, patience right so um you know i you know it's in america we tend to think that either it's not going to come to our shores yeah. or it's not going to come to our t- era our time that's right that's right. And, um, you know, you see people who are su- suffering from all these things, lack of food, uh, lack of safety, health issues around Which the world. Which are day-to-day day life for people in Syria or, or exactly. India or, you yeah. know, Myanmar, exactly. But, or, but there's or also China, like Muslims who are living in concentration camps in China. Exactly. And then there's a time aspect, right? Like you heard about pandemics before. I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember this or if you heard this as well. But I believe our mutual great grandmother had before she married her husband. Her husband had a family That's of right. five kids and a wife whose entire totally family forgot. got killed in the 1918 Spanish flu. I totally forgot about that. Thank you, Umar, for reminding me. That's right. It was the 1918 flu epidemic. Yep. And that's that's I've I've wow. been thinking about that because that's the story we heard growing up. That's right. And, and you always thought like that's never gonna happen to our, No, our, and that's I, a thing of the past. My grandfather, who like so my that my paternal grandfather, um, my dad's dad, he used to tell me about three or four, I forget, siblings that died in childhood of his, uh, that died in childhood um due to smallpox. So again, at, you, you know, and, and by just by virtue of when he was born, I'm imagining turn of the century again, turn of the 20th century, early 1900s, um, there was a plague of smallpox uh, afflicting parts of the world, certainly the subcontinent. And so, you know, people lost family members, not, not just a generation ago, two generations ago, because of smallpox, because of, uh, of other, uh, yeah, epidemics and pandemics. Yeah. So you you know it's like you said yeah you're, just because you live in America and that's right work in a cubicle and all that right. doesn't mean we're immune to I mean and this is a reminder like it's very easy, and it's very easy to it's very easy to forget you know once all this is said and done it's very yeah. easy to go back to your routine but it's it it's is a bit it of is. a reflection point yeah no absolutely and um, yeah so I mean um, I think it's probably a good place as any to 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 kind of wrap up the show. Um, you know, listeners, uh, please, uh, you, you know, I imagine a lot of us are, have idle time or time that we're 
spending um, online, uh, please do reach out. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, engage in a conversation. Um, you can always email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Hit us up on Facebook. Um, Omar and I are obviously we're, we're dealing with a lot more um, uh, free time, <laughs> disposable time. So uh, we'd love to engage you. Uh, but yeah, thanks as always for listening to the show. Uh, Omar, um, I think you, you know one of the things that you mentioned earlier on, on the show, um, uh, Omar and I had, had a wonderful opportunity to um, record with a guest. And uh, uh, we, what we intended at the time was to launch or to use that as an opportunity to launch a new series in the show. Um, Omar, do you want to talk a little bit about what we sort of had envisioned? Yeah, yeah. and this is just kind of, uh, you know, rough, rough thoughts, but we were, we were really th talking mm -hmm. about sharing um, uh, themes on shows. Like yeah. one theme we had was to talk about immigrant stories. Mm -hmm. Um, that'd be like a series so the series, series and, and and not maybe consequent like not it, it may not be like a series of episodes but we would kind of have this ongoing series right it wouldn't yeah. be sequential necessary necessarily but uh immigrant stories would be yeah. and that was just one of many we had other ideas for theory. leadership so, yeah yeah exactly thought so, leaders yeah. and, and, and things like that we'll um, look out for it we'll, we'll we're, we're putting those together but keep keep an eye out and shaw would be We'll post this episode and then we'll we'll post uh, the, the the episode that we were already recorded and yeah so that was going to be the first of our immigrant stories and we had the opportunity to sit with uh, uh, someone uh, a mutual friend of ours um, his father uh, and in fact a uh, old friend of uh, Omer's dad um, and someone whose extended family I know from back in Houston um, and so someone who's been in the Bay Area for a very long time immigrated here in the uh, in the I think it was the mid or early 1960s. Um, and sort of the sort of quintessential immigrant story for people who came uh, as part of, uh, at least in, in me and Omer's case, our parents' generation. So we wanted to capture that, and we had a wonderful conversation with uh, with this uh, uncle, this gentleman. And so do look out for that as well. But uh, yeah, so thank you as always for listening. Um, um, and as we said earlier, please do reach, reach out to us on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, you can email us. Uh, and of course, you can engage Omar and I uh, separately as well. Thank you as always for listening. Stay safe out there. Um, stay healthy. Um, and um, and uh, follow the uh, strictures and the policies coming down uh, on your local and state level. So stay safe out there, folks. Thanks. Yeah, for and also stay stay uh, stay uh, stay stay mentally healthy as well. Stay That's optimistic. Right. Don't get too too down about all this. Inshallah, we'll, we'll make it through. Great point. Take care, everyone. Assalamualaikum.